I mean, how long has it been since we've talked like this? Forever. We talk, yeah. but... Yeah. There are not nearly as many lights. No, usually. not usually. I think it's worth asking you, why did you sign up for this independent movie? Because setting the, setting the time period, the Raimi, the first few Spidey films had come out, the first few X-Men films had right. come out, there'd been Tim Story's Fantastic Four, one at least, maybe two was in production, and they had all been varying right. degrees of successful. We then became Marvel Studios, got our own financing, right. and Iron Man was the first independent movie. And something that now 15 years on, everybody knows about you, is that you are incredibly forward thinking. I remember having a conversation with you early on. You were talking about, basically and not in these words, the power of IP mm -hmm. and the power of IP to bring in the eyeballs, which I always thought, oh, is that why you signed up for this well, independent it, I studio? Think it, I think it's IP linked with technology. Yes. When, when we talk about Iron Man, I think that there was an opportunity for something that I grew up with, uh, that character and those books and the Marvel characters. And Iron Man was not by any means right, my favorite yeah. at the time when I was younger. But I knew him and I knew his origin story and I, and I, and I, I had an understanding of the Avengers, um, though I leaned more towards the Hulk, you know, or characters yes. like that or Spider-Man from Queens like me. And then, then there was also what was happening with, with CGI, with like the Transformers and such. So hard surface CGI was looking really good and so it's like, okay, this might be the moment where this all clicks together. And I had come in. Practical. Because I had, well, practical, yes. because that's what I was doing on Zathura. Totally. So, so remember, the reason I got there was you saw in it, oh, John understands how to do visual effects. Mm -hmm. And then I think we were able to break out because it was a combination of casting, Robert, Gwyneth, the right people, uh, uh, Jeff, you know, the whole, the whole gang. There was like a really good talent pool when it came to the dialogue and how we shot it, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, latitude. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up. I'm kidding. Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'd be out of a job with peace. Well, and that tone that you and Robert discovered on that movie, I would say, became the template in a way for for much of what the MCU became. It was very consistent with Stan Lee's mm -hmm. um, tone, right. but that tone of a little bit of a fun, a little bit of a subversiveness, but then also a heart and an earnestness to it too, yep. that I think was really, really cool. When the audience opens themselves up to laughter, you can then also yeah. sneak them in with the with the emotion. Right. Uh, and I think that is why people combo. talk about a Marvel formula. Humor is a big part of it, because that's what we want to go see in theaters, but because then we, we get the instant feedback. But you had come more from the action realm, which yep. I didn't know. Yep. And so we were trying to recut and recut these scenes to get a cheer at the end of the set pieces. And I could never get like a cheer. Like a cheer. And you would always be like, we can really get a cheer. I was like, I don't know, but I could get a laugh at the end of it. Like, and so you could sometimes trade yeah. out and get a laugh at the end of an action sequence. Um, you know, whether it's the fire extinguisher spraying him or yeah. him falling through the thing or the crashing into the sand or. That movie in particular, and, and you and Robert on that movie, it's the balance, right, between you know, poking fun at it or taking yes. the piss out of a moment, but also, and this is what you both are so good at, taking it seriously. And I remember we added the, the ADR line when, when Tony comes out of the cave and, and takes all the bullet hits. And then we added this very earnest, my turn. That's and then he lights the, 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 right. the flames. And <laughs> th there was a high degree of cheesiness there, yeah. but Robert killed it. And I think yeah. that's one of those cheer yeah. moments. My turn. It wasn't really until we cast Robert that I fully understood what the take was. And once yes. it was Robert, then it was like, I know what the, I, I, every decision became a lot easier. Should we talk about that? Because I think that's probably one of the greatest decisions in the history of, of Hollywood. And everybody has good days and bad days. And I remember on later movies, we'll talk about on 15th anniversary of those, there were dark days, and I, I would say to Robert, we wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for you. <laughs> Meaning, we wouldn't have a studio if it wasn't for That's him. That's true. Or you. Tell me your memories of, of where that idea came from, because there were some other people, there were, and I remember I've there was, about I it. remember that Robert had come in for a general on it, and I remember you had all met with him already for like Dr. Doom or something on another project. I think on, well, maybe, on, yeah. on, on, I think he had come through on a pre, like maybe right. Fantastic Four. Right. 
So everybody sort of knew who he was. And I, I remember sitting down with the guy and I was like, geez, he just got it in it. He's got that spark in him and his eye and he's ready. And that's when we were in your office and, and we were pointing to his headshot and saying, we got to try to figure this out. Yeah. That was enough to get us a screen test. I assure you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace, so I'll happily transist to manufacturing bricks and beams for baby hospitals, making hemp pants and the like. But until that time, can I get you a drink? But then once it was him, that's when my life got a lot easier because A, understood, understood the voice of the character. And then one by one, people were just signing on board yep. because now it became something interesting Gwyneth, to people. Jeff. Gwyneth, yep. Jeff, it all galvanized at that point. And then people were just popping in because it was cool. Paul Bettany. At your service, sir. Who I had worked with on yep. Wimbledon, just doing a voice. And yep. Clark Gregg, yep. who's my neighbor. So, but it felt like a cool project to go to somebody and say, hey, we're doing this with this. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll come. I'll do a voice. I'll do it. But even a the day. way you describe it is a cool. I, I, I remember, not that you were high, strung, or stressed before that. But I remember, <laughs> I remember, I was, and still am. I remember a shift when Danny, I remember you even saying, yeah. once Danny was signed and it was done and he was in, you were like, oh, good, now I can just make the movie. Now, now I can I, just have fun I and know make the what movie. it is. Yeah. And so a lot of it when you're directing, it's um, you have to have a take, a point of view that has to last you years. And if you don't have that, I don't know how you do it. So that's part of it is that's the alchemy of it, of getting the right people together and getting the right vision for it. That isn't, it's not a director down thing. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a group thing that emerges. Yes. And you're making a lot of decisions, but the thing kind of takes on its own energy. And then yep. he, him coming on, it clicked it. And, and, and then we started working together mm -hmm. more at that point too mm -hmm. and figuring it out because it became a concrete thing we were gonna do. So he, right. he was that puzzle piece that right. made it all work. And I would argue that going to Comic-Con when that footage first showed, was the, that was the um, other shoe falling. Because we knew what Robert was like in this role and that he was just doing it and we were doing rewrites with him constantly. Think of another actor. We would not have been up at night no. after rap, no. rewriting the, the next day's scenes. Remember yep. the vetting? Rewriting tent? the next day's scenes yep. and improvising yep. on the set. Yep. And so it was, you know, he had a very, uh, I think, a standard that he wanted to hit with not wanting this to feel, uh, basic he wanted to be special we all knew that it was a big shot for us it was certainly a big shot for me my first yeah. uh, uh full producer credit and really having all the responsibility uh, whether it succeeded or failed but i also knew i had nothing to lose so let's do at least at the right. end of the day let's end up with something we're proud of regardless of how it does downey from that first screen test yeah with jimmy rich and the suit and then coming team team downey coming in i mean i thought he has a team wow uh, he knew this was his shot and it was gonna yeah, work. Yeah. In three, two, one. Woo! I'm curious about your memories of opening weekend. My memory of it is that, and this is strange, and I'm not sure I've thought about it like this before, yeah. is that there was, I don't remember a lot of pressure because in my head we'd already won even before that opening weekend because we talk about the Comic-Con event being right. a big game changer. Right, when we showed that trailer yep. and we scrambled, because we were still, I don't know if we were still shooting, but we're certainly still in post-production in the editing room. It was a year out from yes. release. Yes. So, and, and then we had that one shot with him flying at the end, because that's the, all we could scramble and get. Mm -hmm. We had so much practical stuff, A, for budget, but it also made us yep. in a position to, oh, we could cut a trailer together because we had him in the Mark One moving around. And and then it ended with him flying and like breaking the sound barrier. It was like, great shot. Oh, wow, this, this is gonna work. The Onion, I think, did a headline saying, uh, you know, fan favorite trailer being turned into a feature. <laughs> and I remember thinking, no, right. yes, <laughs> being turned into a, a motion picture. That's so funny. But by the time we got towards opening weekend, it felt like how big is big to me. Right, and they were projecting a certain number that would have been great. Yes. And then it just- Because you're 100% right, we were equating ourselves with the Fox movies of the early aughts. But they also had, tra tracking would give you, I think still does, gives you a number. Mm -hmm. 
and a like, range. Are we going to hit that That's right. number-ish? Yeah. And then it was, and it outperformed that. Yeah. And we were all together because it was a different, I don't know, somehow we were, you'd have to get the numbers from, maybe it's still the same way, you get the numbers from the studio. Yes. So there's like a number you're calling or somebody's filling you in. That's right. And so we were all together having dinner yep. and then we were going to go to the theaters mm -hmm. and sneak into the back of the theaters. So, so we were together before the night shows in West Coast and we were getting the numbers from the East Coast. Exactly. Yes. And, I, and I remember you gifted me the Star Wars book um, when we were up at Skywalker Ranch doing right. post-production, mixing it. Uh, which was a, a compendium of interviews that were that were done before the film came out. And the uncertainty that was in the press notes from the people who were being interviewed before they knew whether people would click with, with Star Wars or not yep. was really inspiring to me because there we were not knowing that it, it could go either way. But I remember we were getting the numbers and we were there at, at Giorgio's. Mm-hmm. And we had, we were in a, we, we somebody had booked a back yes. room and yes. we we're there with all the people who made it and the, yep. and, and the, and some of the cast. Yep. And Robert was just, every time that the call was made and the number kept going up, he was like, <laughs> it's going to hit a hundred. He was like, it's going to hit a hundred. I'm like, oh God, why are you jinxing it? Like, I, <laughs> like, I'm just happy if it hits whatever it was supposed to hit. What it was supposed to hit, I, I forget. But it was like a, it was more than what we had projected what it was going to end up being. That was my memories that even the low end of pro of projections yeah. for opening weekend was higher than we would have was was amazing. It would have been amazing two years before when we'd started it. The only thing I remember for sure is that no matter how good it was doing, I never felt like high fiving like we won a a, mm -hmm. a softball you know game. Yes, it felt like relief. Yeah. It felt like ah, oh, okay, we didn't mess yeah. up. Like people like it. And yeah. then by the time we, and then the part that I liked, it was, wasn't the numbers. It was when we went to the theaters yes. and we would see it play mm -hmm. because that was the type of movie. It's a fun type to go to because people cheer yep. and then people also laugh. If you're doing a drama, very hard to really feel the room, yes. you know, because there's an energy, they get quiet. You could kind of tell if they're engaged. But when you have one of those types of movies, when people are cheering and people are, are laughing, uh, for me, it's coming from being a performer, when you get that, it's almost like you're, it's the same feeling you get when you're performing in front of I think you audience. instilled that in us. I think you instilled that in us. And even in those, I don't remember how many friends and families we did, two or three or four, but when they were laughing, you knew they were in. Yeah. And going back to opening night, when we were at the, yeah. when we were at the Cinerama Dome, introducing it, you and I and Downey and some of the team to a, to a packed audience. And Unannounced. Totally unannounced. Yeah, we were. We just went in the back. We just hit all the different theaters. And, and the Cinerama Dome was one of them. And many years later, I learned that Ryan Coogler, who would go on to direct really? Black Panther, was in the audience that night. And he, and he told me a story. This was months and months, if not a year, into working with him. Yeah. He said, by the way, I want to tell you something. I was at the Cinerama Dome. Oh, he was in college. And he saw it. And he said that he saw the three of us uh, uh, walk past him. He'd been getting popcorn and, and was running in late as we were going out. And he said... And you guys look confident. I knew the movie was going to be good. You look confident. I have no oh, memory wow. of feeling confident at all that night. Me neither. But many years later, thinking that that movie. I think he was projecting. Yes, exactly. Because I was in a blur. I think by the time we were announcing it. Yes. We, we were probably feeling were. Feeling yeah, we were feeling good, good yeah. about it. We've maybe seen some do of Do you still numbers. do that? Do you still go around? We do. Almost every movie. We do. Do you go around people's houses? Yeah, when you're streaming. On Disney Plus? Yeah. Yes. yes. Knock, knock, knock. That's what's been fun about me be able to pop back in to be Happy Hogan because oh, I get to best. like come in and be around it, and it's like I never left. You know, it's really, it's really. You never fun. did. And again, in terms of your forward thinkingness, I've told the story before, but we were in that conference room in that in that uh, those offices above the the Mercedes dealership right. in Beverly Hills, and and we were just you know figuring out how to do it. And I I remember saying something to you like. John, we're going to be together, you know, every day for the next two years. So let's figure out. And you said, no, if this works, we're going to be together for the next 10 years. Uh, and you were wrong because it's now been 15 years. <laughs> 15. <laughs> I knew with like Guardians, that's when I was like, oh, this is this isn't just building off the momentum of what we did. There's yeah. new stuff unfolding yeah, and then, Guardians and then Black Panther was another yeah. huge one like that and event by the way Avengers at all 
that step up from the from what we're doing is was grounded in headlines reality to oh now we're going to we're going to figure out a way to bring in these other heroes from the books yeah that don't fit into the tech genre there's or, or I guess it technically does but it's from other technologies yes. from other worlds so yes. when you got into thor it was it's still tech, but it's otherworldly tech. Well, and it was Coulson who allowed a little connectivity yes, yes. yes. between those things. And 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 and, yeah, and of course you. Sam. Yeah. You know, so you had those you had those those glue characters who were good glue characters and lucky yeah. lucky that we had. And you made you described Nick Fury early on because of course in Iron Man 1 he was just the the tag. Yeah, that was like a, a that was like an Easter tag. egg basically. Totally. Hey, let's get the guy who you know that the they were, the were artists were drawing him. Yes, we're drawing. Sam like Jackson that's a in great little tip of the cap. Yes. yes. And, you then described him as we were going forward as Gandalf. Yeah, that yeah. He would appear yes, when needed with yes. answers, and I always thought that was a very smart idea for for Fury. We had good instincts mm -hmm. to have, like in Iron Man Two, the map behind him. Yes. Show Wakanda. Yep. to show and and fans were starting yep. to look and see and then and then you ended up paying all that stuff off yep. having the uh the liberty to dream about what would be possible in success but not to lose sight that you will not have success if whatever you're working on right, right now doesn't right. work and of course with marvel we have the comics and we have decades and decades yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the comics and the movies now 15 years is a very long time for a movie franchise for the history of marvel comics it's not Entirely right. that long, right? Yeah, which is what's amazing. And and there's a lot of there's a lot of leeway too because there's so many different versions of different. There's different writers who came in and different artists, and yep. each has an era. Yep. So there's a lot to draw from, but it also puts a lot of responsibility on the team, whether it's the writers, directors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, producers, who are trying to figure out how to make all of this align in a way that's palatable to a movie audience. Yes. And then it's also like you have two movie audiences because you got the casual movie audience that just wants to come and have a good time. Absolutely. And you still have to make it fun for them or somebody new, yep. next generation. Yep. Then you have the people who've been, who know it better than you do. And how do for you make sure. it work for both? And that's a very tricky. I, I very would say that's piece. one of the reasons we put the, the Nick Fury tag at the end. Yeah. So it would not be intrusive or disruptive for somebody who's like, right. why is Sam Jackson right. here? Why is right. Sam Jackson in his living room? But if you've waited for those credits, you're probably, and as Edgar Wright suggested, the all the way at the end of the, the credits. Very end. Remember when we showed it to him at Skywalker? It was it was just after the first few credits. Yes. He's like, he's like, nah, you gotta push the whole it all end. The yeah, way. Ferris Bueller style. Yes. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of Shield. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. It's the group of people, right? No, A lot of people always talk about film being collaborative medium, which it which it is. But you need collaborators that you trust, and you need collaborators that you trust have one goal in mind. And sometimes it takes time to, 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 to read people and figure it out, but you were able to mold a group and a system there that we've tried to carry through, where it's just, we're just a bunch of nerds that want to make something cool. It, it very much felt that way, yeah. and it didn't yeah. feel like I was the one who was yeah. bringing that, um, though I, I'll take the compliment, but I felt it was that there was a, um, an enthusiasm around getting to do it. Yeah, that's the key to it all. Because that's when you yep. started doing Marvel movies, yep. it was long before Iron Man, yep. and it was starting off working your way up and through. Yeah. The, now the movie, how many years later made it into the, was invited into the I film? It was just last the, year. The National Film Registry. The, the National Archives inducted uh, Iron Man yeah. for its cultural significance. Now you went to film school, so could you tell, give me, give me greater context? I have no context except uh, whenever I look up an old movie or whenever I, I uh, am going down a rabbit hole of, of, uh, of uh, classic films, on the Wikipedia page, there's always a mention, has it, when, what year was it inducted yes. or not? So it always felt to me like it meant something, that it meant something that, that if there's a, you know, if the, the meteor comes and hits the planet Earth somewhere, there's a vault, a it's solid being vault it's being of saved. the most important films <laughs> that will spin off into space and be found someday. I like that it gives it. it, it I don't it, know if that's it, true, by the way. That's what I like I, to think. I'll go with that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's cool that it seems like it's not the genre or the type of movie that would end up mm -hmm. in the company of other films yeah. that I hear are there. I don't know all of the criteria, but what it boils down to, I think, is culturally significant. And, and, and for that, I think it is. That I 100%. think it is. Yeah. And there are a lot of markers for that, right? There's box office. There's awards. 
Um, I've always thought, going back to that making of Star Wars book that I shared, right? To me, the most important thing was the test of time. Right. To win the test of time award. And I think getting in there was a sign. I think that is that uh, the older I get, the more I realize that that's to to be on a list is is cool because I like that. It seems to be like everybody Mm -hmm. understands what that is. Mm -hmm. But the one the one I really like is when I see how it's influenced other people. And it has been remarkable how much interest has been maintained because it's it's so hard to be relevant for that long, mm-hmm. for a genre, let alone a studio. Mm-hmm. What I find is interesting now is there's people who grew up with it, who this is their context. These are these are archetypes that they that are the basis for conversation. Politicians, mm-hmm. remember he would, remember Obama was like, "We're building an Iron Man suit." I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. I was like, "What?" <laughs> But like, it's part of the fabric. It's yes. become something more. Yes. That's what means the most, other than being able to sit here with you 15 years later. Yeah. Here's to another 15. The truth is, I am Iron Man. <laughs>